Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom.
So, bro, in the orange hat. Hey, bro, so according to the Bible, Israel, Jerusalem, is the motherland. So guess what? We come from the motherland. That's correct. We are from Jerusalem. Israel, that's where we from. You understand? So now the brother said, how do we get to America, right? So you so-called blacks, you so-called African-Americans, you so-called Hispanics, you so-called Native Americans, we're going to find out through the Bible what's your true nationality. Because it's not those names that I just mentioned. Bring it out. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Matter of fact, give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's get an understanding of who we are according to the Bible. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 1? That's one, right! 1. Read. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So if anybody out here that's in earshot, if you have any understanding of the Bible or any history of the Bible, Moses is a pivotal character in the Bible. He's a pivotal man in the salvation of the Israelites. So in this verse it says that Moses is speaking to the Israelites. Read it again. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So we are in the book of Deuteronomy. It says that these be the words, be the words in the book of Deuteronomy, are the words that Moses spake to all Israel. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Read. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Read. On this side, Jordan, in the wonders. So it says, spoke to Israel. He didn't speak to the nation of people. So the words that we're going to read in Deuteronomy are not spoken to the so-called Chinese man, to the so-called Arab man, to the so-called white man. It's spoken and addressed to the children of Israel. Now, give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Read, bring it up. And it shall come to pass, that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, read. to observe and to do. <coughs> All his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So right here, Moses is telling the Israelites, listen, if y'all obey God, you're going to be set above all other people on earth. It doesn't say equal here. It says you're going to be above all other people on earth if you obey God's commandments. <coughs> right? You understand that, bro? Okay, so that's the positive of this contract that's being made right now between the Most High God and the children of Israel, Moses acting as the, as the mediator. You understand? Know now give me verse 15. Let's see the flip side of what happens if you break the contract, right? Read. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So it says if you don't listen to God, this is what's going to happen. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake. So God tells Moses, tell the Israelites, <laughs> if you disobey him, curses will come upon you. Brother, let me ask you a question. What is a curse? Is that a positive thing or a negative thing? Negative thing. Say it again. What is a curse? Is a curse good or bad? It's bad. It's bad, right? So Moses tells his life, if y'all disobey God, curses will come upon you. Read it again. But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God tells his life, if you disobey me, curses will come, right? So. We're going to read curses that are going to perform Israel, right? And we're going to see who the curses apply to, right? Because remember in 1 and 1 it says that Moses only talking to the Israelites, right? So he's not talking to everybody, right? So the curses are going to only apply to one nation of people. Read that. You read chapter 28 and verse 16. Cursed shall not be in the city. So one of the first curses that God says, you're going to be cursed in the city. Read it again. Cursed shall not be in the city. So let me ask you a question, bro. All y'all up there can hear me if y'all paying attention. Who is cursed in the city? Who lives majority in the worst parts of the city? What people? What people? That's, that's the question. What people live in the ghettos, the slums, heavy drug traffic, heavy violence? single-parent households, no low-income, low education. Who lives in the 
is in those areas in the city? What people? Bring it out. Think about it, bro. If you you have you been you were you born in America, bro? Where you from? Where? What what part of Africa, bro? Say again. West Africa. So how long have you been in America? Okay. So when you walk around America, anywhere in the earth in the, in the cities of America, are ghettos. Right? You ever heard of a ghetto? You ever heard of a ghetto? A slum, right? In America, we have ghettos and slums. What people are primarily in those slums? So-called black people and Hispanics, right? That's who you see primarily in the ghettos. The Bible says the Israelites, one of their curses that they would be in the curse in the city. Read it again. Curse shall not be in the city, and curse shall not be in the field. So curse shall you be in the city, and curse shall you be in the field. Hey, sis. Sis, what, what time in history were our people cursed in the field? Do you know? I said, what time period in history were our people, so-called black Hispanics, cursed in the field? What time period was that? It was called, and you have heard of slavery? That curse only fits the so-called black Hispanics. The so-called white man never been cursed in the field. The so-called Asian man has never been cursed in the field. They're not cursed in the city today. When you go to their parts of the city, they got nice houses, nice buildings, the grass is manicured, right? Little kids riding around on bikes, sprinkles. It's nice in those neighborhoods. That's, that doesn't fit them. The curse that God says you be cursed in the city and cursed in the field only applies to our people in a majority, right? Read 32. Verse 32. The sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So let me ask you a question. The brothers from Africa, right? Were your ancestors given to another race of people? Did, did your ancestors get given to another race of people? That happened to you, right? That happened to your, your people, right? So God says that the curse that will fall to the Israelites if they disobey him is that they would be, their children would be given to another people. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So the other people means another race of people. That happened in what we call slavery. What we know as the chattel slavery. Where our sons and our daughters were given or sold away to other races of people. Right? That's a curse according to God that would befall the Israelites if they disobeyed him. Right? So now, as you can see, the curses are identifying the Israelites. That's what they're there for. Give me verse 46. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a son. So the they is the curse, because what we're talking about, the curses, right? It says, so they shall be for a sign. Let me ask you a question. What's the purpose of a sign? Hey, bro, can you come down? Come down, bro. Come. What is the purpose of a sign? What would, I have, what would I be assigned for? What does it do for me? It's an identifying marker, right? I can look at the sign that's above you, right? It says CVS Pharmacy. That sign is telling me that that building is CVS Pharmacy. It's identifying the building or the business within the building. You understand? So the Bible says that the curses that God is telling Israel what happened to them would be for a sign. Mean it would identify them, right? Read it again. Deuteronomy 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So it says the curse is going to be on the Israelites for a sign and for a wonder. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Let me ask you a question right quick. Y'all know who y'all are according to the Bible? Y'all know who y'all are according to the Bible? What's your nationality? What's your race? Huh? I can't hear you, bro. So. Hey, brothers, any one of y'all, man, y'all come out of this for man. Give us about five minutes of y'all time, man. Come learn who you are according to the Bible. Come understand your true nationality. Come out of these false lights. Understand. You what, bro? I'm down with brother for life. That nigga's tripping. So back to you, bro. So it says that the curse is going to be for a sign, right? So what we're doing is we're using the curses to see who they fit in the earth today, right? Because the Israelites... Have you ever heard of a race called the Israelites? Have you ever heard of that before? Have you ever heard of a race or a nation called the Israelites? Have you yourself ever heard that? 
Israelites. Not Israelis. No, Israelites. So, the reason why God has to lead the signs because the Israelites don't know who they are. You understand? They don't have a clue to what people they come from, right? So that's why the signs are here. The curses are on them to identify them. Let's get another curse. Read down to 47. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So the Bible says because we, the Israelites, did serve God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Read. For the abundance of all things. For everything in the earth. Right? Read. Therefore, thou shalt serve thy enemies. Okay, so God says, because you don't want to serve me, the creator of heaven and earth, you're going to serve your enemies. Did your ancestors serve an enemy? They didn't? They weren't no priest. Your ancestors weren't colonized in Africa. No? Yeah, like meaning another race came in and took over your land and your resources, and now they dominate you. Did that not happen to your ancestors? It did, right? So God says you're gonna serve your enemies here, right? Meaning, you're gonna serve the ones that come and dominate you, right? Colonize you and oppress you. You're gonna serve them. That happened to your ancestors, correct? Read it again. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Not only are you gonna serve your enemies, God's gonna send them against you. You understand? The Bible says God's going to send the enemies against you. That's, I want to see if you pay attention, bro. Why would God send the enemies against us? Why? What did we read in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15? What, was the, what did God say would happen for the curse to come on us? Let's read it again. Let's go back. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which are commanded this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, now why did the curses come? Why did the curses come, bro? What did he just say? Because we disobeyed God's commandments. Do you understand? So, the reason why your enemies were sent by God is because our people disobeyed the commandments. Like we're doing today. We're disobeying God's commandments. You understand? Read, go back to 28 and verse 47 again. Verse 47. Because thou shalt stand the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So now it says, now God's going to tell you how you're going to serve him, right? He says, you're going to serve him in hunger, right? Let me ask you a question. Your people, do you depend on your people for your food source? Meaning when you go get food, is it coming and produced and distributed by your own people or by another people? Right. God says you're going to serve your enemies in hunger, meaning for food. Read. In hunger and in thirst. And in thirst. So, bro. When you want something to drink or water, do your people provide that or do you go to another race to get water? It happens to your people, right? Read. And in nakedness. In nakedness, do your people produce the raw textiles to make clothes? Or do your people depend on another nation to ship in the materials to, for you to make clothes? That happens to your people, right? So this is identifying markers on the Israelites. If any people on earth falls in these categories, they are the Israelites. You understand what I'm saying? Read that again. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, in hunger and, in thirst, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. So then God gets more specific. He says, you're going to serve the other people, their enemies, he calls them, right? For everything, in the want of all things, right? When you want a license to drive a car, you have one of those? You know? Okay. You pay rent? You, you pay rent? Do you pay rent to your brothers or you pay rent to another race? Right. You don't own anything you yourself or your people, right? So God says in the one of all things, 
And if you want a license, if you want to pay rent, if you got bills to pay, if you want to be born, if you got to, if you have to bury someone that dies, these, all these things are provided by our enemies. They're provided by the ones who put us in slavery. God in the Bible calls them our enemies. Today, we've been under the delusion that they are friends now. That the, the, the 400 years of slavery that we were under just miraculously went away. Right? And then now, those same people who did these horrible things to our people. I don't know if you can see this sign. Bro. I don't know if you can see this sign, but the lynching, the murder, the rape, right? The robbery, the colonization of our people, whether it's in this continent or in the continent of Africa, all over the earth. Now we believe that these people are our friends now. That somehow a zebra has changed the stripes. That's what our people are under the delusion of. That's why we out here to take you out of that delusion, to make you understand that these people are your enemies, the ones who you now serve. Read it again. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall sin against thee. So God calls them your enemies. I don't call them your enemies. The Bible says they're your enemies. We are. In hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he, so God says, and he, that same enemy, read, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So God says that same enemy will put a yoke of iron on your neck. Did your ancestors have yokes of iron on their neck at one point in time? Were they in chains, shackles and chains? No? And it happened to your people? That's where you from. Hey, where you from? You say you from where now? In Africa? I can't hear you, bro. I still, hey, bro, you gotta come down. I can't hear you, bro. Hey, come, come down and talk Bill with us, bro. I can't understand nothing you say. My question was, where are you from in Africa? What part? Hey, bro, I can't hear you, bro. Come, come, come down and holler at us. But the point I'm making is, our people were in shackles and chains. That happened to the so-called black Spanish Native Americans. We were the people that the ones that our people that still in Africa. They were colonized. They had chains on their neck. The enemy put yokes of iron where they were oppressed. Right? That happened. That's recorded in the Bible. God says, and he, the enemy, shall put a yoke of iron on your neck. God is identifying the children of Israel. He's showing them who they are in the last days. Through the curses, you understand? Give me 68. Read on, read on that. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Verse 49. And the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So, your people in Africa, did another nation come from far and destroy your people? Right. That's in the Bible. Read it again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flying. And that people that came, or isn't, they, isn't their symbol the eagle? The, the Europeans that came to colonize your, your homeland, right? Their signature or their symbol is the eagle. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.